Hi, this is KSP with Tape, and today I'm flying the Falcon 9 rocket. Uh, now, Falcon 9 is another Kerbex designed craft who make renditions of SpaceX's crafts, which I've explained in my Falcon 1 video, so uh, please go check that out after um, after you've watched this video if you want to find out about Falcon 1. Uh, more about, uh, I gave a brief summation of SpaceX, and if you really want to find out about SpaceX, they have a YouTube channel, and you can go to SpaceX.com. But I'm going to get right down to uh, making the rocket, because that's what you all want to see. So we'll go into the VAB, and... Right, um, I'm going to launch their Dragon Capsule, because then I don't have to build anything, and I want to show you the whole mod pack. Um, well, yeah, their Dragon Capsule is what they use to take cargo into space, uh, large amounts of cargo, to the International Space Station. And you can use, m and I think it can take man uh, ma men, humans, into space if it wants. Uh, it has this nose cone, which separates at some point. Um, because I don't think you use fairings on this. Although, oh no, it doesn't. Yeah, I'm not sure about that actually. Yeah, I think I'll just put fairings on it. Maybe, yeah, I'll just put fairings on it. I haven't actually uh, used that nose cone before. But for, we'll put the dragon solar panels on it. It comes with its custom solar panels to make it look authentic. Um, just put them on the... No, we. I think... Yeah, no, for that you need the cargo bay. And it has this cute little... Well, this large trunk or cargo bay where you mount the solar panels. Uh, so we'll put them there. And then in structural, again, it has uh, solar panel covers, which are also act as decouplers. So you've got your little awesome craft there. Um, is that everything you need for that? I, I believe it is. Oh, uh, oh yeah, it has um, its own docking port, which I should probably put on the top. I'm not going to dock it to one thing, because I have nothing in orbit, not even the little satellite accidentally deleted that, but uh, yeah, we'll just put that on, and you get your awesome... That's probably where you mount the nose cone to, actually. Uh, I'll try that now. Yeah, there you go. There it should go, but it's not. But, oh, I've got maybe it's symmetry messing with it. Nope. Snap. Okay, the nose cone just isn't going on today, so that's that's good. Thank you for the. Okay, so we'll just carry on without it. So in structural again, you have the payload decoupler and SES. Uh, the mod the mod developer always concludes these at the same time. Although, oh no, you put the the adapter on the bottom, and then if I can grab it, they hardly have any purchase on these, there you go, and then you connect that to, why is it connecting like that, I wonder, it should be fine, uh, and then you put your, and it's got some huge fairings on it, that hopefully will fit around, although they're not doing symmetry, no, being very buggy today, which is most annoying. There you go. Got your big craft going. Right, I'll just quickly check. Oh, and the thing, the capsule itself has RCS thrusters. Um, damn it, yeah, I think those should go in that. Yeah, just trying to figure out which bit goes where. Right, so uh, that's looking good. Um, right, so we'll find this. The second stage fuel tank is this odd looking thing, which clips in here, and you've got a, uh, a Merlin engine. It's the same, technically the same engine, and uh, the same class of engine as the this first stage of Falcon 1, but it's much more powerful and much larger. But no, it's less powerful, it's just larger and made for vacuums. Then you put Interstage fairing on it. And the fuel tank actually comes in two parts, I'm not really sure why. Uh, it has the top half, which you put on here, I think that's yeah, 1800 litres of fuel, and another 1800 bottom one. And we're dragging up. Um, just use Alt, not Alt, uh, Shift. You can grab the whole thing. And then it has, because uh, Falcon 9 has 9 engines on the bottom, they just made a 
simple, well, simple, it's just you clip it on, it has all nine engines, and that is the craft. Um, quickly name it Falcon 9. <clears throat> Check the staging. Uh, there's fire, then that breaks off, then those break off. After that, then that breaks off. Yeah, oh no. That shouldn't, okay. That should fire, then those break off, then that breaks off. Ah, uh, that looks good. Um, I'll just, oh, I always forget to put action groups on whilst I have the thing open. Ah, oh, damn. I won't bother with action groups because that's going to take some time and um, it's just quicker. Oh, I can't get this in the thing. There you go. I'll just put some landing. Uh, some landing? No, some launch clamps on it. Landing clamps that probably would be very difficult to land inside them. Well, relatively difficult. I don't know. Never tried it. That'd be a weird video. Okay, we've got all of Falcon 9. I think that's done. I'm, I'm, yeah. Let's just hope. But it's done. <clears throat> it should be fine. Right, we're on the launch. We are ready to go. Well, we have to wait for physics to launch. Uh, for physics to load. Uh, yeah, there you go. Physics is loaded. You can see the craft. And I forgot to change the staging around in the VAB, but that's fine. I'll just drag it down, and nothing will explode. Although nothing will explode anyway, it'll just hold it on the pad. Right, we'll max the power out. Lock SAS and go. Uh, again, it's like Falcon 1. Um, it looks a lot, it, it looks a bit, it doesn't look like normal liquid fuel coming out of the um, engines. Not sure what that is. Oh, it's roughly down a little bit. I'm not sure if the engines have overheating problems, but they might. As you can see, it's a looking very elegant with its little engines and a big rocket. That's what I always like about Falcon 9, rather than most things you build on a Kerbal Space Program. Huge, bulky engines and huge, bulky everything. Getting up to... yeah, it's not as fast as Falcon 1 because it's much heavier. But this is a hugely powerful engine. I think it generates 19, 1900 kilonewtons of thrust a second, which is the most powerful engine on this game. And the next rocket, which I will probably be mocking up and launching in probably the next video, is Falcon Heavy, which, when it's actually made in real life, will be the most powerful rocket, uh, most powerful vehicle on Earth. And the only power, only vehicle more, that's ever been more powerful than it is the Saturn V rocket, which was huge and shaky, and the astronauts who were on it said that when it started they couldn't see anything, it was ridiculously shaky, but it took off and it was... Yeah, the Saturn V, I think the CEO of SpaceX is always talking about it, he says it's a brilliant vehicle and they wish they'd kept it because he doesn't like the space shuttle because he says it was a waste and killed the American space industry. Which I'm not sure, you can draw your own conclusions. I like it because it's, it's a spaceship. But anyway, back to what we're doing, coming up to 10,000 meters. Getting ready for gravity time, I think I'll do it around now. So, I think this can get into geostationary orbit, so I I may try that, but I may, um, haven't really decided. That'll actually probably take a little more time. I think I'll just put it in a relatively high orbit. Let's see, our apoapsis is at 40,000 already, and we still have not as much fuel as I'd like on the bottom stage. Oh damn, that, that cut out really soon, I was hoping it... Okay, um... Right, we'll really quickly ignite that engine. Oh, Dan was swaying off as well. This has all just gone to hell. Uh, I'll use the SAS and the capsule there. Oh, you can see it coming out of the fairings, that's so... It doesn't look very cinematic, but... Must be done. Right, fire the engine. There you go. Okay, I might not be able to get into it as high an orbit now because, well, ridiculously it's going to be out of atmosphere, yeah, on its apple axis. I'm going to 
burning through that fuel horribly with a low ISP. That's all we need. Right, we still have 399 litres of fuel. <clears throat> that should be fine, I'm hoping. Or awful. I'll just warp into space and see what we can do with this. Right, on my previous runs, I think I've done slightly better than that. I'm not really sure what happened. Maybe I gravity turned too soon, or... Uh, it'll be fine. Probably. Right. That's... 70,000. Start tipping over. I'll do it in the this view. It's more cinematic for you watching. Well, hopefully someone's watching anyway. <clears throat> right. I'll put it just above horizon, because I usually do that. And fire up now. Uh, you can see we're still approaching epilapse. So I'll pull up slightly off the horizon to keep us away from it. That's alright. That engine does look really good when firing. I think we're still approaching the epilapse, but it's fine, I think we're fairly stationary. And there we go, we can start pushing back down onto the horizon now. Like I say, the <clears throat> where you want to be burning ideally is on the apoapsis, but really try not to go over it because then you'll start falling back to earth and it'll all just be very inefficient. But then don't burn too, um, because you don't want to be wasting fuel pushing upwards as well. You want to be circularizing that increasing the apoapsis, and I am running out of fuel. Okay, we're getting very low on fuel now. This is ridiculous. I'll just try and be as efficient as possible. Try and salvage this mission. There you go, periaps. Okay, we are in a fairly low orbit actually. I was hoping to get it into a high orbit, but I must but um I don't remember the Dragon Capsules. Well, I'm not sure how heavy it is actually, I didn't check. But we are going to get into orbit. And then the Dragon Capsule has thrusters of its own. So. So, um, so yeah, it can. So, it, yeah, so I can improve the orbit with the actual capsule. But I think I'll leave it there because I want to tempt fate. Anyway, I'll show you the capsule in space, so let's get rid of the fairings. And now the fuel module. And we have our capsule. I'm not sure what's separating next, actually. Oh yeah, I fired that right back onto the rocket. That was actually quite a cool view. And, okay, what's that? Oh no, we don't want to separate that. Oh, what did I just separate? Um, oh yeah, okay. Now we'll separate the the covers for the solar panels and deploy the solar panels. On the actual Dragon launch, to the first Dragon launch to the space station, they had a huge problem where the solar panels just, I think they just weren't working, or just there were a lot of problems. They had to upload new kind of programs and software and code all the way to the Dragon capsule or it just wouldn't work. It was very nerve-wracking, I think. I didn't actually see it, but... Okay, so we've got that into orbit. I'll just... I'll show you the um, thrusters as well on the capsule. So those... Oh, it didn't... Oh, God, I... Okay, that's gone. Uh, that'll be fine. I didn't actually mean to do that, but as you can see, I accidentally ejected the cargo bay and power supply. But anyway. So you can use these RCS thrusters as normal thrusters. They generate quite low power, I think. Oh, 10 newtons. So 
can see I'm pushing my epilapses out. And then you can just use them as normal SES for just kind of flipping around. Oh, okay, apparently uh, they're not actually firing, but either way, yeah. So that's us in orbit without solar panels, which is always good. <clears throat> so I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you like the video, please do like, and if you want to see more, subscribe to the channel. Next I'll be launching Falcon Heavy, so come back for that. If you haven't seen the Falcon 1 video, please do go and watch that. Um, I hope you've enjoyed watching. I um, <clears throat> This has been KSP with Tape. I'll see you next time.